John, thank you so much to have you here today on thank the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Strilecki, one of the most amazing and inspiring pe people in the whole world. So <laughs> I'm so, no, really, I mean it. I mean it. I'm so inspired by you and I'm so grateful and thankful to have you here today and to share beautiful moments. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> and um, we met a couple of weeks before at the beautiful event at Gedankentanken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, sure this year, but yeah. and you were just one of the main parts of the big stage. Barack Obama was also in the lineup. Yeah, I was on right after Barack Obama. Yeah. yeah. No pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> was it? I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it was a very cool, interesting experience. So I was telling my daughter, she was saying, well, how was it, Dad? And I was like, well, yeah. you know, I mean, I've done speaking for a lot of years as the books have come out and people have asked me to speak and I've spoken to big audiences. Before, but when you're speaking to 15,000 people in that sort of setting, it's yeah. very different, as you saw when we were on stage. Yeah. And then uh, when you're asked to follow the guy who is viewed as probably the most likable president in modern history, <laughs> that's a different story. And then I had 18 minutes, which is so short compared to how long I usually speak. So that was uh, that was a whole bunch of factors combined, but it was it was great. I mean, I really enjoyed it. So and he's a very nice guy. He just interacted with right? me. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Totally. The energy and yeah. I, I saw you like before the big opening, you were standing there in front of the stage and there were like, in Germany we say like a grape of people standing around <laughs> you, like, you know, like a Traube von Leuten um, and they were staring at you and you were just telling your beautiful stories. Yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, so I arrived, exactly, I arrived yeah. and there was a bunch of people associated with the organization and they were just, they were just like wanting to hang out and talk, yeah. you know, and it was so awesome. People had great stories about what the books had meant to them the way in which they're using it. That's always so spectacular to hear that I read something and it inspired me and here's how I'm putting it into action in my life, you know? So yeah, truly inspiring. Yeah, and for me it was like a really like a magic moment because um, I feel, I, I felt your energy. You have like such a kind of aura, just attracting <laughs> people. No, I mean it. And do you know what I mean? Do you believe in energy? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think what you put out there is what you're receiving. Yeah. And so. You know, and, and what you surround yourself with is how you feel. You know, there's some really fascinating books that talk about the way in which our environments impact our emotional state because of the, the water density of our body. Yeah. There's this great book called The Hidden Messages in Water that talks about that. Oh, thank you. We yeah. will mention it. In oh, the, yeah. If you haven't read that one, that is an absolute put it on your reading list because it talks about how the music, the, the, the sights, the sounds, the words, everything that's around mm -hmm. you on an unconscious level are impacting your body. And so some days, you know, you feel a little off. You can't tell why you feel a little off. It might not even be you. It's something in your space, right? yeah. but you can control that. So that's good to know. I heard about like um, when you see your, when you observe your environment, like for example, you're in nature and you see like a tree and you really observe that tree yeah. that's through your eyes, the um, imagination get to your heart and then your body reacts to it like in any kind of way. So you yeah. can just really, Heal yourself. This is about all the uh, self-healing kind of stuff. Yeah. So, do you believe in self-healing? And I do. There's an amazing book called um, Spontaneous. I think it's called Spontaneous Regression. And mm -hmm. what I love about this book is that I had had the idea for this study for a long time, and I, it was like in my head. And I was like, Why doesn't someone who has sort of the medical expertise do this? Um, and basically, what it is is someone took a look at all the cases of spontaneous remission. So, someone who had a disease, mm -hmm. and then it seemed to just instantly disappear, right? And I was like, yeah. why aren't we studying these cases? Like, this could yeah. be the answer. And so, sure enough, this medical doctor, um, I can't remember her name, but kudos to her. She spent years doing this study and then wrote it in a book called, and I think it's called Spontaneous Remission. And so, yeah, I'm like, okay, so what's the secret? You know, what's the secret sauce to helping somebody get healthy? Yeah. And a lot of it is your environment, your energy, the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. So, and I'll tell you something about that. Sorry, not to continue on this topic, but I had this epiphany the other day that often when people become ill, they go to the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. And they spend time in the hospital and they get a little bit better. And then where do they go after that? Yeah. Right back home, which is the place that they felt ill in the first place. And that's interesting. Right? Like maybe as a society, as a world, we could think to ourselves, oh, well, 
after you're getting better, then what do you need to change back in the home environment? Because maybe that was the place that was making you sick in the first place. You know? like, I don't sure. think anybody's thinking about that, but how cool that would be. And what would you change when you just um, imagine yourself, you're like in an environment of people and the people are like letting you feel pressure in any kind of way, but how would you just escape out of it? You, I mean, not anyone there can just quit everything and just go for traveling. Like, right, right. What's so, the first step? So you, you just talked about a really cool scenario and over the last couple of years, one of the things that I adopted in my life, which is truly, I mean, one of the things that has mm. been so special to me is the use of what I call a mantra. Mm. And so I used to have this thing where I'd be driving in my car, right? And my mind would be like drifting and I don't know why, but it would like go back to these conversations from 20 years earlier, mm. or like a moment in my school experience. And it was always something bad, right? Yeah. And I was trying to replay the conversation in my head to fix it. And one day it dawned on me, like, this is so pointless. Yeah. <laughs> I am never going to go back to that moment in time. Yeah. The only way I'm going to go back is if I invent a time machine. And if I invent a time machine, I'm not using it for that, right? No. I'm going to use it for something super cool. And so out of this, I said to myself, well, what's a better way to use these moments of my time? And so I came up with this idea of a mantra. And it's the five things, I often talk about the big five for yeah. life, but this is slightly different than that. But it's, it could be linked, but it's the five things that I'm focusing on right now in my life that I, I want to my life to be like, right? So it could be a state of harmony, it could be a state mm -hmm. of peace, it could be that, you know, if you're struggling with self-confidence or self-esteem, you could say to yourself, um, I, I, I believe I'm perfect as I am, for example, right? Yeah. Or just not I believe, I believe, but I am perfect as I am, right? And so you just repeat this in your head. And there's five of them, and you repeat each one five times. And wow. this is so useful. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I, I can't tell you exactly the way it works, but I can tell you from personal experience over the last two years that this is amazingly useful and amazingly powerful. So. Like um, work with the subconscious. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost like hypnosis, um, like yeah, self hypnosis. I think, I think it's it's a combination of self hypnosis, mm -hmm. and then also if you think of it like sending a beacon signal to the universe of, mm. this is what's important to me, this is what's yeah, important to me. Yeah, right? yeah. Because otherwise what I'm sending is, oh, that conversation from 20 years ago when I sounded like an idiot and I felt really bad about myself, yeah. this is really important, <laughs> this is really important. <laughs> Why do I want that being what I'm yeah. saying is really important? Um, so I can't tell you exactly sort of on a quantum level how it works, but yes, I do believe you're sending a signal saying this is what's important. I'm so interested in all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I love it. And it's like, I'm, I'm always saying like, our mind is working like a, like Google. Mm -hmm. It depends on the question you put in. Totally. Totally. Yes. And then you get all the answers. Yes. <laughs> so just really think about the question you type in. Yeah. So why am I a good person? So you will get answers like right away. Yeah. And when you ask like, why? wouldn't I be a good person or why am I not a good person? You get answers right. for that. Right. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And I mean, you're talking like in front of a lot of people on big stages and about great topics and you just sold a lot of books and inspired <laughs> so many people there outside. But how is it with you about the kind of vulnerability? Do you sometimes feel like shame or do you know why I'm asking? Because this week um, I'm staying at my parents' house right now okay. because um, I don't have a flat anymore and I'm like I heard traveling. You're the country. You're, yeah. you're the intrepid <laughs> traveler. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. I love it. It's like really for me traveling is it gave me so much in my life and all the yeah. like. Stuff. You're, you're creating stories. Yes. Right? Yes. And what I love about that is that I've come to realize at the end of our lives when we're very old, what mm. we'll have left is our stories. And if you haven't written any stories that are interesting, the end of your life must be pretty darn boring. <laughs> You're so right. It's so deep. And yeah, exactly. And this week I just um, sat down at, at my family's house at my parents because um, I love to spend quality time with my family when I'm here in Germany. And I had this moment, I, um, I, I was working a lot and I felt re very weak 
very like small and yeah. I just really wanted to hug <laughs> like that moment that <laughs> someone just holding me from yes. behind and saying hey Ellie my parents are calling me Ellie everything is fine and just relax just be and for me it was like okay I'm seeing my fear yeah it was like yeah. eye and eye with my fear and I was like okay I can analyze you right now right. I have my tools <laughs> all the toolbox <laughs> I know what to do all the right. personal development stuff but at the same time my subconscious was telling me no just let go yeah. and I was crying and I was like mama I need a hug <laughs> it was so hard for me because it's really like I, I'm working on it um, to ask for help but we all are we all are. Yeah, I'll be the first to tell you that there are absolutely moments when I am down, right? And it could be something that is important to me isn't going the way that I wanted it to, or I just feel overwhelmed at times, you know? And uh, that's life. That's the, the more you're working, and, and especially if you're working on something that you genuinely care about, right? It's one thing if you're working at a job yeah. that you couldn't care less. Hey, you show up, you work from nine to five, you go home and whatever, right? Yeah. But when you're deeply passionate about something that you're working on, or you're excited about something that you're creating in your life, then you're fully vested. And when you're fully vested, the emotions are all in. Yeah. And therefore, when things don't necessarily go the way you want, or maybe you're just pushing yourself to that 99% energy level, mm -hmm. there's gonna be times where it's whoosh, decompression. So yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And this, this is a great point because uh, someone was asking me, how do you maintain that? Right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not careful, you swing too far and then you, you break down and you collapse, even yeah. if you're doing something that you love. So to me, it's about allowing yourself to figure out your non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. right? And so mine is an example, just to mm -hmm. share with people who are listening. My non-negotiables are Sunday is volleyball day for me. Yeah. I play beach volleyball. I used to Great. try and make it. My goal was to try and uh, be a professional beach volleyball player. And I, I was striving oh, for, wow. for when I was in my 20s. <laughs> and, uh, and I still play at a very high competitive level. And I've now been playing with the same group of folks for like 15 years, right? wow. so they've become friends over the years. And so Sundays is my non-negotiable volleyball day. Nice. So when someone says, hey, I'd love to do an interview, what day do you want to do it? Sunday. Can't do it. No. Right? Doesn't matter who it is, right? That's amazing. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, Wednesdays are non-negotiable adventure days with my daughter. Wow. Right? So I meet her for lunch at school, and then when she gets out of school, we go do something together. Wow. And it doesn't matter what my team is asking me for it doesn't, yeah. it's non negotiable right and so i think allowing yourself to figure out what your non negotiables are even mm -hmm. if it's just 15 minutes at this particular yeah. time of day that's really important you know cuz that, that i think that reinforces for your soul that i'm i'm remembering us too <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? yeah totally we have to yeah we have to yeah. day by day and and it's important to so this is one of the ahas i had to arrive at painfully in my life but yeah. so do you have an easier time giving to others mm -hmm. or allowing others to give to you oh wow <sighs> that's deep yeah i'll tell you what my guess is my guess is you have a much easier time giving to others yeah because you're a giver yeah right you're a compassionate person you have high empathy yeah. And so often when I'm in a larger group setting and I say that question, you know, how many of you find it easier to help others than to mm. accept help from someone? Yeah. Oh, All the hands go. Right? And so here's the, here's the part where it becomes very interesting. Mm -hmm. So what I ask them is, why are you being so selfish? Mm. And they all look at me like, what? Selfish? I'm not selfish. Me? Yeah. What? I, I'm the opposite of selfish. Yeah. I love to help other people, right? I say, I know you love to help other people. Why do you love to help other people? Well, because it's, they need help, right? And, and then we all start to justify it. And by the way, I have lived this 100% yeah. in my heart. Right? But how do you feel? How make that feel? Yes, yeah. exactly. So how does it yeah. make that person feel? Oh, it makes them feel great. Okay, so how do you think they would like to feel mm. by doing something nice for you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. then suddenly yeah. we're like, oh my gosh, yes. It's okay to accept help from others because that makes those people feel good too, right? And so when you're out there and you're trying to change the world and do lots of good things, remember that allowing yourself to receive the hug is the greatest gift you can give your mom. Yeah, <laughs> and it was so nice because it, fe it felt like really like a refuel, the yeah. whole body. I, I felt so yeah. whole and safe and, and uh, I could breathe and it was like, yeah, why didn't I 
uh, done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we're all a work in progress, right? Yeah, totally. And, so, it, and that's fine. That's the beauty. Like when we're just accept not being perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. It's and okay it to just, make mistakes, right? The trick is to avoid making the same mistake over and over again. Yeah. Uh, making mistakes means you're pushing towards new levels. So you're, you're you're an adventurer on a bus writing mm -hmm. stories, right? The yeah. bus is going to break down at times. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, every day, like <laughs> it's an old timer. There you like, go. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. it's okay that the bus breaks down. It's okay that we make mistakes. Yeah. But it's great to avoid making the same mistakes because if we're just making the same mistakes, then we're not really progressing. We're not growing. Yeah. And the universe has a nasty way, well nasty is the wrong term, the universe has a very specific way of helping with this, in that the first time you make a mistake, you get the gentle little tap on the shoulder, hey, hey, just so you know, right? Yeah. But if you make the same mistake about 10 times, at some point, it feels like a two by four across the forehead, right? And it's like the universe saying, okay, yeah. <laughs> how many times do we have to do with this, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I think that's the opportunity. Thank you so much for that, and um, I think like when you were talking about lo your daughter, when we when we are kids, we don't think about that. I know. We love to do mistakes, like all yeah. the time. I mean, when it hurts, okay, it hurts, but then we just stand up and go again. You're totally right. We're like, hardwired. You're not going to go from crawling to walking. Yeah. Right. Unless you fall down a lot. Yeah. And yes, we're hardwired with the awareness that that is part of the path to success until it gets beaten out of us, mm. right? or told, you're told, you know, don't do that, you're going you're gonna to mess that up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and the curiosity, I think this yeah. one is like very special, when we are just kids, we see the world like with big eyes for the first time, and we are like, like, like Alice in Wonderland, yes. like everything is just new, and we want to experience it, and then it gets lost yeah. on the way. Why do you think um, this curiosity gets lost? Well, I think this is part of the human experience. This is part of the human challenge. Because you're right, when you watch a baby, mm -hmm. a baby who is so young that they can't speak, they're mm -hmm. amazing. Like, they're looking around. Yeah. They check out everything. They're amazingly observant. Yeah. Right? And then, as kids, we're intuitively aware to have fun for the sake of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't know if you have ever interacted with a lot of little kids. They'll, they'll like, grab you by the hand and be like, let's play with trucks. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like, this is so awesome, right? And they're, and they're making up worlds and they're telling you yes. stories. And, and then at some point, as we progress through our human experience, mm -hmm. people start telling you it's not enough just to have fun. Mm -hmm. But the more I think about the human 28,900 days that we get and ask myself, why are we here? Mm -hmm. The more I keep coming back to the yeah. fact that we're actually supposed to enjoy this experience, a gift, right? And it's supposed to be fun. And we're supposed to do things not because there's 10 reasons why it's good for you, but yeah. we're supposed to do some of this just because it's pure fun, whether that's yeah. a walk in the woods or taking a bus and driving yeah. around the country. I mean, everybody's got their own definition of what would be fun for them. But I think bringing the fun back into your life and allowing yourself to be non judgmental about that, mm -hmm. oh, what a gift. What a gift. What a gift. It is, and it gets like so, such an easiness to your life. Right. Yeah, and when life gets easier, you just get like more um, enjoyment just in life. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's like we're playing as kids. We're playing with the cars, with the sh smash cars, like yeah. yeah. And then we ne need the real car, like the real big car, to just have the the same fun we had as kids. Yeah. And we were playing like with plastic, right. you know. Right. It's like, yeah, we, we just don't need nothing and it's enough. Yeah. And that's the beauty for, for me, especially I learned to be a, a minimalist, like to don't have stuff yeah. and it serves me so much because yeah, all the energy goes to what do I need to wear? How do I need to look? What do I need to build up? I need a car, I need a big uh, house and all of that. But I mean, it's fine in a part of way when you just don't get, uh, um, like um, the identification with that. I think the key thing is, is it, is it right for you? Yeah. Right? I'm not a big car guy. Mm -hmm. I have a, I drive a truck. I love my truck. Right? But I've never been a big, like, in super into automobiles. But that's just not my thing. Right? Yeah. And so if it is someone else's thing, and that's where they want to spend their time and energy, that's awesome. Totally. Right? That's awesome. Totally. But what you said to me is the key. Mm -hmm. And that 
is allow yourself to identify for you mm -hmm. that this is what intrigues me about life and this is where I want to spend my time and energy and resources. So you're doing it because you gave it conscious thought as opposed to somebody else told you that's how you should be spending your time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the true self, I think. Yeah, that's what we were talking a little bit before we started about mm -hmm. um, pure authenticity. Yes. Right? Allowing yourself to be, to use your term, you know, to yeah. be naked. Right? Yeah. Um, I love the term brutal honesty. Mm, right? Yeah. To be brutally honest with myself. Mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know what? I really don't want to yeah. do that thing. Yeah. I really want to do this instead. I really, I want to spend the next hour on my kayak, right? And yeah. I don't really want to go do that other thing. And to allow yourself to be brutally honest with your thoughts, with your emotions, yeah. and with the people that are around you, right? And inspire them to allow themselves to be brutally honest also. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're right. It becomes, all the pressure goes away. Yeah, and you give the, the you make the room up for all the others to also like get naked in that totally. room. Yeah. If you're just the first person to just, yeah, let go and say, hey, this is me. This yeah. is me and here I am and yeah. it's fine and I'm fine. And you also can be if you want to, so just, yeah. yeah. Authenticity is the way we, that the world gets changed because when yeah. someone sees you being authentic, mm -hmm. they may not decide to go take a bus and drive around the country. Mm -hmm. But what they will think to themselves is, wow, like she's so courageous. Like, look how authentic she is. She wanted to do that and she's mm -hmm. doing it. I always wanted to open a flower store. I'm going to do mm -hmm. that, right? And, and so by being authentic, you inspire other people to be authentic, not to necessarily follow your version of authenticity, mm -hmm. but to follow their own version of authenticity. And of that's what's course. Awesome. Yeah. And how do we get there? I mean, by ourselves. What do you think? How can we get like to that point when we can say this is this is me yeah well the brutal honesty thing we just talked about is a good way so mm -hmm. you know asking yourself when these thoughts and emotions and yeah. belief systems come up saying wait am i really being brutally honest with myself mm -hmm. right and then i love this idea of challenging every belief and so if a fun little game to play give yourself a week and mm -hmm. keep a little journal if, or keep it on your phone And every time something comes up that you believe, mm -hmm. right? Ask yourself, why do I actually believe that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and maybe it's like, as a, a very simple and sort of ridiculous example, but it, when I was a kid growing up, they always said, don't go swimming after you've eaten. Yeah. Right? So wait 30 minutes. Until, yeah. Right? I have no idea if this is true, but this is sitting in my unconscious mind now, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Why? Right? And so that's a very somewhat non-impactful belief system, yeah. but there are thousands of other ones, um, especially around money and around mm -hmm. relationships and around jobs mm -hmm. and around security and safety and the rest of these things. Yeah. And to ask yourself, why do I actually believe that? And what I find in my own life all the time is that it's from a movie, it's mm -hmm. from a book, it's because when I was a kid somebody told me something, but very rarely. Mm -hmm. Is it because I've consciously stepped back and said, yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> you experienced it, so you can just prove it. This yeah, is my, my life experience yeah. is telling me this is actually true or false, yeah. right? And so this is a fun little game that can help us be mm -hmm. authentic, right? Because it's all those beliefs that form our actions and mm -hmm. are the way in which we approach them. So, totally. Yeah. Ah, beautiful thank you so much for sharing that but the, the thing is like okay now I'm I can say okay this is me and here I am but mm -hmm. what is in relationships I mean then we get to another me and this is here yeah. I am what do you think um, how can we just establish like a, a healthy and happy relationship like a real relationship yeah so a lot of the things we've talked about for the powerful things you can implement on a personal basis then lead to these great relationships and so brutal honesty yeah right how many times does a relationship get off center because we're afraid to say to the other person i feel wounded right now like what mm -hmm. you said hurt me and here's why it hurt me mm -hmm. right that willingness to allow yourself to be raw yeah. in a conversation with someone because we've learned over time for the most part, or been trained over time, that if you're raw like that, right, mm -hmm. there, you're opening up the possibility for tremendous pain. Right? Yeah. Because they may reject you, they may say, I don't feel that way. Yeah. But when I think of what the ideal relationship looks like, it is the opportunity to be raw like that, and that the other person is willing to be raw back mm -hmm. and say, so if you said, you know what, 
when you said that, like it really hurt my feelings. It reminded me of this time when this happened and it mm-hmm. just made me feel insecure, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And then I say, well, you know what, when you say that, now I feel threatened. Mm-hmm. Like, now we're in a, yeah. uh, now we're in a heart to heart dialogue. And if we can allow that space to evolve and mm-hmm. see each other, we'll never have that same discussion. And most relationships fail because the same conversation yeah. happens All again right. and again. Okay. You play your part, I yeah. play my part, 15 yeah. minutes into it, there's two doors slammed yeah. and we don't want to talk to totally. each Totally, it's like this the whole time, <laughs> right. like rocky mode on. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, figured out how, <laughs> we figured out the pathway to get to the point where we hate each other for the next 10 minutes. Yeah, so. like drama. Drama, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But so what if we could create a new pathway where we figure out the way to avoid the drama? see each other see this each other. was yeah. so beautiful yeah. yeah exactly like it's like do you know the movie avatar yes yeah yeah they there's told, a, that expression yeah, namaste which is a Buddhist yeah. expression i never understood i knew it was i see you and i was like i see you too like what, yeah. <laughs> what are you saying to me and finally <laughs> it dawned on me like i really see you I, yeah. s- I see the essence of you i see the energy of mm-hmm. you i see exactly where this is coming from right that's the beauty of that expression oh. finally dawned on me <laughs> oh, this is yeah. This is deep. Like it, it means like my God is seeing your God. Yeah. Like the beauty in me is seeing yes. the beauty in you. Yes. Because all the beauty we see in other people we have into ourselves. Yeah. And when we accept that, wow. Because I think um, the the biggest fear of us is that we just are afraid of our own power. And, and, yeah. and then when you roll it into cultural conditioning, right? So let's say uh, you become unbelievably self-confident. So let's say someone goes from a position where they have low self-esteem, mm. but then through the course of their own personal development, maybe they're surrounding themselves with a good support structure and they become more and more self-confident. Right? Mm-hmm. But there's maybe something that was inserted into their belief system that says very self-confident women have trouble dating. Mm. Right? Maybe mm-hmm. you read it in an article or it was the headline of a magazine as you're walking through the grocery store and it says, Bit well, is self-confidence <laughs> a relationship killer? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Of course it is. It has to be. Yeah. If it's there. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so without even realizing it, there is this dual conflict going on inside your unconscious mind. Mm. And if you, if you don't address that, then you'll ever be in this, this battle, right? Mm-hmm. But if you can address it and realize that, no, mm-hmm. I actually believe the path to my own personal greatness mm-hmm. is to allow myself to be incredibly self-confident so that I can be raw, Yeah. right? That's the thing. That's the point, yeah. to being raw, like brutally raw. Yeah, and you can't do that unless you are self-confident yeah. because you'd be so afraid to let somebody else in yeah. to see you for who you really are, your, your most frail moments. You know, and your bravest moments. And that's beauty. I mean, this is why we're here for. I think we so. came naked and I think we should go naked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then we yeah. put on and put on and put on to pretend and to please people and all that. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. That's all. It's it's a past. But yeah, we all make, uh, we all make our own deci- decisions, I yeah. think. Like, this yeah. is the point. And that's, you know, this is where it goes back to the fun part. At the mm. end of the day, maybe it's just a game. Yeah. And the rules of the game were, listen, we have to put all these impediments and barriers in front of you so that you you have fun. Yeah. Right. So in, in the book Safari Des Lebens, I talk about this aha that I had one day where if you were playing soccer, playing football, right, and there was just the empty goal and you in the ball, mm-hmm. and you're out there and you're kicking goals and you're running up and down the field, at some point that is boring. Yeah. Right? Because there's no challenge. The challenge comes from when you add some defenders. Then you feel like you've really accomplished something. You got mm. behind the defender and you went around it, and then you kick yeah. the goal. And I think this is the way life works, that we have these challenges which push us. And then when we get beyond that challenge, mm. then we have really grown. And oh. that's where the fun is, right? So instead of looking at the obstacles as, oh, seriously, another one? Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, there's days when I feel that way, but. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. But if we can look at it, uh, in our best of days and say, oh, cool, like, all right, bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
And I think um, when when you just would have one sentence, you could uh, give to all the people in the world, all the children in the world. Let's say right. to all the children in the world. Do you have this one magical sentence you would give them? Wow, one for magical the, sentence yeah. for kids. To grow. I mean, the first thing I think of is my own kid. The first thing I want to tell her is I love you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, being a parent, I was on the plane yesterday and there was a mom in front of me with a very little kid. And when she got up, she banged the baby's head on the overhead accidentally, you know? No. And, and my first instinct was I reached over for the baby's head. You know? Oh, yeah. Because when you when you Intuitively. Parents, yeah, when you're a parent and you love your kid, yeah. what you find is that you, you, you get a connection to all kids. You realize that yeah. they are all part of this taking care of little human beings, right? Yeah. And so I, I think I would want them to know that, listen, it's okay. Like you're loved wow. and I think maybe from that place of just like you had that experience with your mom right mm -hmm. what that did for yeah. you was recenter you to know that all right now I'm ready to go take on the world again yeah and, and so I think that's what I would want every kid to know is that you're loved and from that place of love you can now go have fun and be adventurous no. and, <laughs> yeah you're an amazing man <laughs> thank you so much really for just bringing people to that world, uh, children to that world. I would like to my kid. Yeah. I mean, I, the, all these experiences that I've had as a father that I've learned mm -hmm. and grown with, uh, you know, I went to my wife as well because she was the one who said, I really want to be a mommy. And mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't have any calling to be a dad. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that drive to be a father, right? Yeah. And uh, it is truly the most spectacular experience in my life. Yeah. Every single day, I love it. I absolutely love it. You can't prepare. No, and, it's, <laughs> and I think to, to sort of bring it all full circle, not that everyone, not that everyone's path is to be a parent yeah. by any stretch, right? Mm -hmm. I've talked to some people who said, I really want to be a parent, and when they tell me the reasons why, inside I'm sort of cringing because it's, it's I want to receive love, it's, mm -hmm. and it's, it's like all the reasons that I think, wow, like, I'm not sure you're going to really dig this parenting thing, mm -hmm. you know, because the first two years of parenting, it's really all about giving love. If yeah. your expectation is you're going to be receiving and receiving, yeah. that's You talked about it in your book. Yeah, that's, Beautiful. The, baby, that's the baby Gerber ad, right? Mm -hmm. Where, oh, there's the baby tucked yeah. on the shoulder. And yeah, there's totally those moments. But during the first two years, like, <laughs> you're sleepless, you're you <laughs> changing diapers, and you're giving. Yeah. You're, you're mostly giving, right? Um, but, but then there's this evolution where there's an interplay and then there's, as you experienced with your mom, mm -hmm. now you guys are giving each other, yeah. right? And that's awesome. That's beautiful. But that is not everyone's path. Mm -hmm. And so for everyone to allow themselves to pick the path that means the most to them, right? yeah. it just so happened it was part of my path. But, you know. To feel good. Just to feel good. Yeah. It's a brutal honesty, right? Yeah. So if you say, I really, I don't, I don't think parenting is for me. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Right? What is for you? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I want to go travel the world. Okay, go travel the world. All right. Have fun with that. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing that. Well, and, and it's I think it's relevant to our current society because uh, this is another thing that you like see in <laughs> magazines as you're going through. Can you have it all? Right. Uh, yeah. Here's 15 steps. Right. Uh. <laughs> no, you, you yeah, can't yeah. have it all. Right. Because if you decide to be a parent, then and you're an entrepreneur, something has got to give, right? If you decide to be a minimalist mm -hmm. and to ride a bus around the country, mm -hmm. then you don't own 15, you know, thousand square foot house, right? I mean, yeah. so you can't have it all, but the point is you don't want to have it all. Yes, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. You just don't want it. No, so allow yourself to shed yeah. that perception that you have to have it all to mm -hmm. be happy or successful. Yeah. And say, no, actually, I don't want it all. What I want are the things that matter most to yeah. me. Right. Yeah, Jim Carrey <laughs> just told it. It was also like very beautiful. I wish everyone in the world to just be a millionaire, to just get to the point to know it's not about being a millionaire. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Well, and this is as you're experiencing with your boss. This was yeah. me when I backpacked around the world. So the only thing I owned in the world fit in a pack that went from my butt to my head. Mm. I was Beautiful. happier than I had ever been yes. in my entire life. Yes, yes, because you just... I had zero responsibilities. Yes. I had complete flexibility, complete yeah. freedom, right? I was like, this is awesome. I wore the same five shirts for like yeah. months. I know what you're talking about. And then, and then when it wore out, I'd be like, okay. go buy one new shirt. Right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you have like a shirt family. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I would wear the same pair of shorts three days in a row, right? Yeah. Okay, now it's dirty. I gotta change to the other shorts. You know, and that was just so freeing. 
but was it hard to get the the past this way like to to just shut it all just no. to to no it no. was not easy right how wrote, did you do that i wrote in my journal i'll never yeah. forget this so uh i wrote in my journal that there were th this was about one week into my trip and so i wrote in my journal there were a thousand reasons why this made no sense before i left this <laughs> trip right because people told me you're crazy to do this i was 32 right i mean they're like this is the kind of thing you do when you're 19 or take a gap year in college but 32 like you should own a house cars have kids you know little, little. yeah right yeah. why would you do this at 32 so there were a thousand reasons why it made no sense and i wrote in my journal after a week i said well i've been on the road for seven days there were a thousand reasons why this made no sense before i left and not one of those reasons is still valid after this one <laughs> <laughs> yes so Beautiful. you know everything from <laughs> Dear diary, I'm happy. Yeah, dear diary. Thank I'm you. Happy, right? <laughs> you know, and, and like this adventure that you're on, yeah. it's very similar in terms of the travel. Like you go to mm. another country, you don't know how to order food, you yes. don't speak the language, right? Yes. You're driving a bus, but what happens? The bus breaks down. Are you a mechanic? Like, how are you gonna fix it? I have to do. Like, you have you YouTube figure, tutorials for everything. Yes, <laughs> you figure it out, and that's growing, right? That's like putting the defenders on the football fields. Yes. You're like, all right, I, wow, I gotta change a carburetor. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> this was my journey. <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah but and once you fix the first carburetor yeah fixing a flat tire is nothing nothing right yeah once you've worn the same pair of shorts for three days in a mm -hmm. row then to like i don't know have to wear shorts for one day i won't talk yeah. about yeah. right? I, i gotta sit in a bus for 11 hours okay no, yeah sounds good yeah whatever. what is a washing machine yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. what yes <laughs> yeah. exactly you used to i remember yeah. i was in africa and we had been camping Oh, I love Africa. I have oh, also been in Africa. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, okay. like a couple of uh, months before. That so we should definitely talk Africa. Mm -hmm. So we were staying in this little A-frame tent, so right? just big enough for two people to lay next to each other. Uh -huh. right? And we had no pillows. We just had two sleeping bags. And after I think six weeks on the road, we were finally getting into a town, mm -hmm. and we bought two pillows. That night. You'd have thought we were sleeping in the Ritz Carlton. Yes. $2,000 in the hotel. Like, I mean, whoo, yes. wow, right? Wow. Yes. And so, yeah, the great thing about these types yeah. of things is you learn that it doesn't actually take yeah. that much to make me happy. It right? takes nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it, you, it takes nothing. You so, can just be in nature, totally naked, and just be the happiest yeah. person in the whole world. Yeah. yeah. So, so where were you in Africa? I was in Cape Town and I okay. traveled the, the garden route yeah, uh, to Port Elizabeth. Oh, I love it. And I uh, jumped the bridge, like the, the big bridge. Oh, uh, the, the bungee the, jumping. Yeah, the bungee oh, jumping thing. You. Yeah, it was great. Like on uh, the 3rd of January, okay. af after the New Year's, I thought, okay, let's jump into the New Year. <laughs> That's a big jump right it was there. beautiful. And you know, the, the magical thing was you just feel hold. Is you right? just you jump but you feel hold yeah and this is like the big uh, kind of thing i'm i'm in my takeaway from from this jump to just go for it just yeah. let let go and just feel hold yeah yeah this so i love cool. that type of adventure thing mm -hmm. that you did uh and i'll tell you why i've sort of how i've sort of applied it in my life when i was a kid i was very afraid of roller coasters mm -hmm. right? and at some point i decided i wanted to be a pilot And wow. so as you can imagine, like that's sort of a bizarre, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I gotta get over this fear. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, yeah. like like better before yeah, you yeah, go before on the plane. Yeah, before I invest thousands and yeah, yeah. thousands of euros in becoming a pilot. And so I bought a one day ticket to this theme park and I did nothing but ride roller coasters all day. Right? And I'm like, I'm going to face this fear. <laughs> and the reality that I had, which I have then applied countless times in my life is, when you're waiting in line, and you're mm -hmm. watching the roller coaster, there's like 50 people on there every single time it goes around the track. Nobody dies, Yeah. right? And so much of life is we have this irrational fear that something horrible is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Even though all the evidence suggests the exact opposite, mm -hmm. right? So why my fear of the roller coaster was that something bad is going to happen and I'm going to be injured or die. Yeah. And yet I could see every day people mm -hmm. are on there, right? And with the bungee jumping, 
Yes, you're looking over the precipice. Yes. But in reality, they do this every day. No, you don't. You don't look. No, I can't. <laughs> no, no. Right. You just jump. You just jump. Yes. Right? Um, and so I think a big part of life is in, in the Big Five for Life book, I talk about finding your who's, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're afraid to leap, mm -hmm. whatever that means, find examples of other people who have already leaped. Mm -hmm. And it worked out just fine. Yes. And, and learn everything you can about their story because then the unconscious mind goes, wow. Like, mm -hmm. Maybe it's not as dangerous as we thought it was. Yes. And that day at the roller coaster park did that for me. It wasn't just the riding the rides. Mm -hmm. It was also watching thousands of other people safely ride the rides. Yeah. yeah. And they were your best friends in that moment. And yeah. you surrounded yeah. with all the people. Right. And yeah. I saw how your much peer group. Were having. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe it doesn't have to be a terrifying experience. It mm -hmm. can actually be a fun experience, right? And I think that's a very interesting little small analogy in my life for how I was then able to look at life, right? Because maybe it's not about being afraid every day either, which was, I lived in that space for a long, long time. So. I know what you're talking about. Me too. Really? Totally. I was so afraid of going uh, on stages. Yeah. It was n not my thing at all. I was like, me doing that? Never, ever. Yeah. And then I started acting. I don't know why. It was just an intuitive thing telling me, like, go into your biggest fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was my, 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 my journey, <laughs> like, from, I, yeah, from the beginning on, like, going into the fears. Yeah. One by one by one. Yeah. But that's so like... I will tell you something beautiful. super cool that I figured out in my own life about mm. the fear thing. So when I was a little kid, I would have these these unbelievable flashes. Like I would be walking down the street, and this was like I was five, six years old, so quite little. Mm. And I would be walking down the street and I would see a truck and I would have this flash of like the truck running uh, past the curb and hitting me. Wow. Right? And uh, I would see barbed wire. I would be at a farm, I would see the barbed wire and I would see the image of it encircling me. Like, mm. just horrible, right? You can imagine as a child mm. how terrifying this is. Mm. And I could never figure out what is going on, right? But I lived in this constant adrenaline fear state. And finally what I realized, and I don't remember exactly when it finally kicked in, but what I realized is that, I, and it's not just me, we all have this sort of sixth sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's alerting you to what is the worst possible scenario. So it's like the thing to avoid, mm -hmm. right? So when I was five or six, what that sense was telling me is, okay, so be careful if the truck comes your way, because that would be bad. Mm -hmm. But my five or six year old filter didn't understand, mm -hmm. right? This is a gift. This is not something to be traumatizing you. Mm -hmm. This is actually your intuitive abilities at a super high threshold. Mm -hmm. But the trick is to play with the intuitiveness and say, so what I do now, and what I've learned over time, is to say, thank you for that, I'll watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Now tell me the best scenario. Yeah. Right? So when I'm traveling in a foreign country. It's good. Yeah. yeah, and so, because otherwise your intuitive, your intuition is always pointing towards keeping you from the worst possi mm -hmm. possible scenario. But life isn't very fun in that space. Mm -hmm. So if you can help guide your intuition towards, all right, so tell me the best. Oh, right? that's so good. Yeah. It's been so life changing for me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> that one. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. I think the, the audience will like just, uh, yeah, clap hands right now because it's so important to have that. And uh, yeah, to, to see like both opportunities. We have like yeah. always two opportunities or more, yeah. even more. And uh, just one last question. If yeah. you would have like a superpower, like whatever for a superpower, <laughs> you, can, you can have everything you can imagine, right. but just for yourself, what would you choose for? Well, this is gonna sound a little silly probably, but I, <laughs> ever since I've been a little kid, I've always wanted to be able to fly. Like, and <laughs> like I'm sure there yeah. are better superpowers, but yeah. The, uh, the ability to actually just fly. And I do, I have dreams, and I used to be a pilot, so mm -hmm. I understand the essence and the feelings of like riding in a small aircraft and sort of riding the currents, mm -hmm. right? But when I have the dreams of when I'm flying, I'm actually, as you said, just like no plane, no nothing, just me flying. And I can fly like mega close to the ground and use the currents and the up currents and fly. Wow. I think that ability would just be beyond ridiculous. Amazing. <laughs> and where will you fly? the first uh, point where would you go to wow um well because now i'm a bit of a daredevil at times contrary to the, yeah. the story of the uh, the roller coasters but i think i would fly as high as i could to get a perspective on the planet 
Wow. You know, like, I don't know if you ever have heard the story of Edgar Mitchell. He was one of the first astronauts to be able to see the moon or yeah. see, to be, see the Earth rise from space. Mm-hmm. And he said it was just absolutely life changing to see yeah. how small we are in the universe yeah. when we think that our problems are so big, to see that the entire planet was just a dot in the universe. Yeah. And so I think it would be pretty cool to go as high as I could to see the Earth from wow. a sort of perspective. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I think when I'm on the plane, like every time. Yeah. Well, and, and so what's really cool about being on the plane and looking down yeah. is because you're, you're driving around in your bus and you're mm-hmm. living this minimalist life. Yeah. Is, and I don't want to say this to be judgmental in any way, but just to hopefully share a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I was on a plane one time and had this very powerful epiphany. I'm looking down and the houses look like that big, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, like how many people are giving up their entire life to own that? Yeah. Right? And they don't even own it because if you don't pay the taxes, yeah. the county takes it back. If you don't pay the mortgage, the bank mm-hmm. takes it back. And If we're, if we're brutally honest with ourselves, is that the trade-off we want to make, mm-hmm. right? Because when you see it from 20,000 feet, you realize like, it is that small. Right? You can't see it. <laughs> yeah. You can't see, you can't, you can't recognize your own house. Right. It's not there. Right. But wait, I want to know your superpower. If My you superpower. superpower? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, okay. I think um, I would love to, to heal. Oh, I would love know. to heal myself like the superpower is just only for me so I just if I would love to heal other people I, yeah. I would heal like the whole time and I wouldn't live anymore but if I could have the superpower to heal myself I can just help so many people like all the time and experience like yeah a great lifetime yeah yeah and it would be great because um, yeah I just have so much energy for everything and uh, just to to give people all that and, and yeah that's yeah. that would be a, although you just in conjunction with that that would be a cool one the ability to heal people yes. and to go into a, to go into a, a, a ward of a children's hospital and just oh. be like yes and I walk will, out yeah. and nobody would ever know it was you and the parents come in and the doctor says oh, we don't know what happened but so they're better beautiful. like that yes. would be so awesome Yeah. Actually, I'll take I that think, over flying. <laughs> I think uh, a small kind of that we can do it when yeah. we just really. I, I think love is a kind of that. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in townships, so this is why I'm like, um, can, um, uh, Cape Town is, is my second home okay. country. Yeah, I'm always there, and uh, yeah, there I work with an organization, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful to just see how much you can do with just spending love and being there, yeah. and with hope. And yeah, it's well, in a small example of that, I had this epiphany. I was traveling in Peru, mm-hmm. and I loved Peru. I loved the people. I, I loved, want to go there. It's it's seriously like carve out three months of your life and just go wander. It oh is yeah, truly a very special country. And I was having such a good time. My Spanish was very poor back then, mm-hmm. and so I couldn't really communicate as well as I wanted to. And I wanted to do something. And I was thinking to myself, what can I do? Like I, I was quite poor and had a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And um, so I did two things that are interesting stories. One is I went to the, the market and I was wandering and there was the flower section. Mm-hmm. And so you could buy a dozen roses for $2. Wow. Okay. And so I bought a dozen roses huh. and I wandered the section that was the flower section. And every uh, old woman that I met, I oh. gave her a rose. Now she was selling <laughs> roses, but you would not have believed mm-hmm. the expressions on the people's yes. faces and the hugs that they yes. gave. And it was such a small little gesture, yes. right? But they were so touched by that. And I thought, wow, like you could do that a thousand times over and have fun with that. Then the other one was, I realized that when I was walking down the streets, that if you smile at someone, right? Mm-hmm. If you yeah. smile, they automatically smile back. Yes. It's like, we're wired with this. Oh, yeah. friend or foe, oh, mm-hmm. you're smiling, and it's genuine as it was fake, but you're... So what I realized is that when you're walking down a busy street, if you smile at someone, mm-hmm. they smile back. But what's interesting thing is that since you're both walking, mm-hmm. when they smile, 
the person behind you actually sees their smile mm -hmm. and therefore by default smiles. Yes, totally. And the person who sees their smile is not the one who's smiling, but the one behind them. Yeah. And you create what I call a smile ripple. Wow. <laughs> and we know, this one is good. we know, because there's been some amazing studies yeah. that when you laugh and when you smile, it kicks mm -hmm. off the happy healing chemicals in your body. Yes. And so as you were saying, although I've never thought of it, so thank you for this interview because mm -hmm. you just changed that perspective. <laughs> no, I do not have the ability to go into a hospital where and be like, bing, 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 yeah. cured. But I absolutely have the ability to have smile ripples, and mm. those have at least not nearly as powerful, but some degree of healing effect on everybody on that street. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is like the sentence we want to end that interview. Right. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Do you do nothing else? Smile. Do you like to make a difference? You know, execute a smile ripple. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, you're John. Welcome. You're amazing. You're oh, thank, you. thank you for that interview. I mean, I I could just talk with you for hours so we can <laughs> we'll just go yeah please so when uh, will you be in germany again do you know that i will be back in october because uh, the third cafe book will be coming out in october this is what i wanted to hear yeah, yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. i'm super psyched about it actually it's uh, it's definitely something that is very they're all close to my heart but this one in particular mm. um, talks about some things that i've struggled with over the last couple of years and tried to find answers to as i have continue to progress in my own life journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the experience of going back to the cafe was incredibly cathartic for me. I found the answers that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that readers, when they read it, if they're asking themselves these same questions, maybe struggling in some of the same ways I was struggling, mm -hmm. that they also will find some of their answers in the story. So, wow. Yeah. And where do you uh, will be? In uh, Germany, I'll be at the. Well, I'll be doing actually probably a month long tour of the ah, country. Yeah, so I'm gonna be there for the Frankfurt Book Fair for the book yes, launch. Yes. Okay. But uh, I'm actually bringing my family with me, and so oh. I'm gonna travel around Germany and Austria and Switzerland. And I think I'm gonna be in Sweden for a while because the book is launching there. So yeah. you have to. Sweden <laughs> is so beautiful. Really? Yes. Okay. Oh, have you been there? Me. No, I haven't. No. Yeah. Okay. You have to. All right. It'll yeah. be great. So if you got some tips for me, places to go in Sweden. Yes, <laughs> I will for sure. Thank you so much. It was thank an you. honor to have you here on the show. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for I doing think, what you do. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for doing what you do. And yeah, we can just inspire a lot of people and the people can also inspire a lot of people. And we all girl. just, yes, <laughs> just smile. <laughs> okay. Let's go on to the day and have an yeah, amazing one. Thank you so much. Yeah.